Well, first of all, Donald, thank you for joining us at Penn State. It's, no problem. It's been a pleasure already, and I'm, and I'm really looking forward to further conversations. Uh, as you know, our COIL perspectives are a way of us uh, tapping into the expertise of our guests, and uh, we like to take advantage of that. And really excited to have you here helping us think about innovation and technology and the potential impact on teaching and learning. A lot of exciting stuff. The, the challenge I'm having with framing a question for you is that thinking about innovation and technology is a really big bucket. Like we can talk, and you can talk very broadly, but I happen to know that your interest areas uh, recently are a bit more in the area of AI mm -hmm. and VR and AR, that kind of domain. And I'm wondering if I can start you off with a question about where do you see the promise of that technology and, and, and its impact in higher education and uh, maybe a, uh, just framing it a little bit for us. Well, it's interesting that you asked the question in the future tense because the real answer, the first question you should be saying is where is it now? Because mm -hmm. it's all the invisible hand. Mm -hmm. AI by and large is invisible, it's like the bottom half of the iceberg. Mm. So uh, almost every online system you use is driven by AI now, but you just don't see it. And the impact has been phenomenal mm. already, so it's not future tense at all. Mm. So you use mm. Google, pure AI. You're on social media, AI driven. You're on Netflix, it's AI driven. Online dating, finance, mm. every part of your world is now driven to a degree by AI. Mm -hmm. So it would be bizarre to imagine mm. that education will be unaffected by this because it's already had a massive influence mm. on everything you do, certainly online. A, the, the reason that I think it will, it's hugely important now is we had an election in the US, clearly a causal factor in that C shift was people losing their jobs through automation and technology. And that did happen in agriculture it then happened in the factories, so people moved from the fields to the factories. They then moved from the factories to the offices, and they're now being shipped out of the offices, but there's nowhere to go, so people are trapped. Now, AI, in a sense, is exacerbating the problem, but I have a belief that it can also help the problem. But it will only help if we use AI for social goods. At the same time, it should be creating as it destroys, like the god Shiva. You know, you have, we have to look at both sides of the coin mm. here. So we have ample evidence that AI is massively important in terms of what it's doing to employment and the shaping of society. Uh, at the same time, we have to think about using it in education because we have no choice. We will have more leisure time. We will have to train mm. people for new jobs. We will have to cope with the catastrophe that would be mass unemployment. So AI is a force mm. for good. So, so following along with that, do you think that, um, and I appreciate you're, you're bringing it back to the, to the current, we are using it in, in, instead of sort of projecting out too far. Um, do you think, do you think that, that maybe making it more visible, educating our community, the higher education community about AI, about the concepts, about the applications, because as you say, it's, it's under, the, under the iceberg right now and it's part of our responsibilities to maybe bring it to the surface so that people can begin envisioning how it can impact their teaching and learning. Yeah, you have to make it more visible because it's already there yeah. and everybody's using right, it. Right, right. So it's not as if it's, it, it, it's a new thing. But mm. there's an interesting caveat to that because I think you can keep it as a black box. There's no reason at all why you should be immersing yourselves in two years of solid study on how to write algorithms. Mm. This is a black box. You can use it. Understand what it is, yeah, its right. dangers, its benefits. Mm -hmm. But the real thing is, what are your problems? How can it help mm. you? That's the focus here. Always look for these yeah, challenges. Yeah, yeah. Now, the challenges in teaching and learning are legion. Mm. Teaching is really hard. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things involved in teaching, the admin side, mm. marking motivating students. Oh, many of those things can be solved mm. if we just applied very smart technology. Unfortunately, mm. the past so far, we've had two and a half thousand years of technology. We've had the pen, we've had papers. Mm. Technology's always been part mm. of education. Mm. Then a disaster struck, the blackboard. Mm -hmm. There was a Scots guy, I'm Scottish, who invented the blackboard. <laughs> I have to apologize for that because then every teacher in the world turned their back on students yeah. and lost power of dialogue. Yeah. And we still have that with PowerPoint, mm. same mm. thing. Mm. Now we have a chance of getting real Socratic dialogue back into teaching, I think, because a, you, you have this whole notion of natural language mm -hmm. processing, so you're understanding what people are saying, automatic translation, mm -hmm. but you also have the ability for the students to do that as well. It's been far too text-based so far, mm -hmm. far too academically text-based. Uh, so learning by experience has almost been eliminated in the teaching and learning yeah, process. Yeah, yeah. We now, with VR and AI, have a chance to bring that mm. back. And I've seen some wonderful examples in the teaching of physics and many mm. other subjects on that front. So I think uh, mm. we have to 
raise it to the surface. I actually think you have to be strategic now. I don't think you should have a learning plan into the future that doesn't have a technology component. Mm -hmm. That would be almost absurd sure. because there isn't a learner on the planet who doesn't use actually the things that academics don't like very much, but they use it anyway. Yeah, yeah. So Google is a big pedagogic shift. Wikipedia mm -hmm. clearly sure, is. There sure. isn't a student on this campus that doesn't use yeah. Wikipedia. Sure. So why ban it? Why have a downer on it? Right. Uh, beyond that, that was flat though. Mm -hmm. You know, flat linear courses. Mm -hmm. uh, but the world's 3D. Mm -hmm. You're, I'm looking at you in, two, yeah, in 3D, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but everything we do is 2D. Sure. So VR has a great mm. opportunity here of, mm. of opening up real 3D experiences, mm. which is the real world. And AI brings smartness to bear. Mm. So we used to have teachers and learners. Mm -hmm. We now have two other forms of intelligence. We have smart teachers that are actually machines, mm -hmm. and they are learners. Mm -hmm. So machine learning, what mm. a fact. Suddenly technology uses the word learning, the game mm. we're in. Mm. So you have incredibly smart, intelligent software that not only delivers very focused skills, it learns itself super fast. It's a super fast learner, faster than your brain mm -hmm. in certain domains. Mm -hmm. It's not getting rid of teachers, it's taking the pain away from teaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're on the cusp of that happening mm. uh, with adaptive learning, in assessment, mm -hmm. uh, with the automatic building of content, which I've been involved in, all sorts of angles mm. here. That, uh, yeah. So that, that's a perfect segue into, and I don't know if you could, in a second or two, describe what an environment might look like, either today, some exciting ones you've seen, or maybe where you see the field going. Uh, if I'm a student in a, in a, uh, a certain discipline, I don't know, mathematics or, or, or whatever, take your pick, um, how, how might these shape my learning experience? So, so right now my learning experience in residence is, is a lot of going to a location, sitting in a seat, and, and, and even if it's an engaged experience, you know, not strictly lecture, it's still location bound, time bound, domain bound. H how could it be different? Okay, well I have a sort of taxonomy for uh, AI and learning. Uh, it's similar to the taxonomy that the car people have from a simple car that might have a couple of chips that moderate your engine right through to the Tesla which and self-driving a completely autonomous car, about five levels. Mm -hmm. Level one is just it's embedded in the tech, okay? Mm -hmm. So Google's a good example there. We use Google unthinkingly but it's embedded in the tech. Mm -hmm. It's just pure AI, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. But boy has that changed our mm -hmm. worlds. If you, are, if you do a PhD now, when I did a PhD, six months I spent just walking up and down library shelves looking mm -hmm. for books, journals. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. th these kids don't have to do that any longer. Yeah. The next level mm -hmm. is assistive. Tools that help you either teach or learn. Mm -hmm. There's some great examples there. I'll give you one example. It's mm -hmm. photo math. So teachers hate it, kids love it. You just have your mobile, you show it the math problem, you look at the mobile, it gives you the answer. How cool is that mm -hmm. for kids? Mm -hmm. You imagine teachers' mm. reactions to mm. that? Mm. But you press the steps button and it unfolds yeah. the steps between yeah. the question and answer. Great for teachers. Yeah. Yeah. That's an assistive technology. Yeah. Loads of that coming along now. Let's go up a level to adaptive learning where you're going through a course where a bit like a GPS, you have an, a, a piece of artificial intelligence that's constantly monitoring you, getting data about you, also aggregating data from all mm -hmm. other students who've taken this course and guiding you. Shaping and, and, and modifying yeah. that, that experience, okay. Exactly, yeah. and in real time giving you feedback that matters to you at that moment, mm -hmm. and every new experience that it presents is decided by the sat nav. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, that, sorry, that's a European term, the GPS. Yes. So we have that wonderful opportunity in adaptive learning, and I've seen really good results in this from large-scale courses in American history and biology and maths, all sorts of subjects. Let's raise the stakes even further here, though, because I think there's also content production. Mm. And a lot of people in faculty shy away from producing content because they want to deliver it by lectures. I've never understood this. Mm. I've never really understood the cottage industry that is the lecture. Mm. If I were a journalist, I wouldn't stand up in front of my audience and read my piece out and say, I'm not going to publish it in a newspaper. You're going to have to sit and listen to this. One-off hit. Mm. Nobody learns a damn thing in one-off hits. Yeah, yeah. You have to give students a second bite of the yeah. cherry. So recording lectures is a, a good example mm. of that. But MOOC land, bring, your, bring it down to six minutes, involve other active mm. learning. You can do that using AI, certainly. Mm. Uh, you're really raising the game there. Assessment, mm. let's go up a step mm. here. Mm. Who loves marking? Who loves that at Christmas time? Mm -hmm. well, everybody hates it. <laughs> essays, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But you can yeah. use assistive and smart AI to do essay marking. Yeah. Actually, I think the essay is a problem. You should be breaking your assessments down at much more sophisticated formats mm -hmm. and using technology to do it automatically. You can mm -hmm. automate that process. Beyond that, this is a really interesting one. So Ebbinghaus in 1885 
discovered, well, didn't discover, I mean, you un un unraveled the, the forgetting curve. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's watching this video now, they will already have forgotten what I said at the beginning, because mm -hmm. that's science. Sure. The brain is a forgetting organ. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we stop that? Well, you have to actually, uh, on, on fairly reasonable intervals to allow consolidation to take place, you have to practice actually do deliberate mm -hmm. practice often in the future. Every student learns that really quickly mm -hmm. after failing a couple of exams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then they get their head down and practice and reinforce and read, read, read. Mm -hmm. But you, that's done very inefficiently by just highlighting, note-taking, highlighting, mm -hmm. rereading. In actual fact, the science shows that that's an incredibly inefficient mm -hmm. way of shunting stuff from working memory to long-term memory. Mm -hmm. The real trick is to look away from your notes and recall it into your brain. That's how people really learn. Mm -hmm. Now, with algorithms, I can deliver spaced practice ex learning experiences mm -hmm. to you. You do the course today, you're going to get your exam in 30 days. Mm -hmm. Between now and then, the maths will deliver it maybe an hour a day a week to the exam. Mm -hmm. But it will also raise the stakes as you go along, so you get better and better and better. Mm -hmm. But it will force you to effortfully mm -hmm. learn that stuff, mm -hmm. as opposed to just reading the notes and underlining, which is very low efficacy. Mm -hmm. I've been working a lot in systems that do that. Now, 130 years of research have shown that space practice does work. Mm -hmm. Read Make It Stick by McDaniel uh, and Rodger, two really good theorists in this area from cognitive science. It works. Mm -hmm. None of us use it. Yeah. Isn't it absurd yeah. that one of the most basic principles in learning theory is almost completely and utterly ignored in teaching and learning? Mm. Now, I have some sympathy with teachers here because we've never had, you know, when students walk out from the lecture hall or the room, uh, then they're gone. You know, we don't, we, how do you get to them? Well, they have mobile phones. Yeah. We have an umbilical yeah, cord yeah, to them. Yeah, so I think yeah. the delivery to mobiles, you mm -hmm. see Fitbits, all mm -hmm. sorts of things, doing this anyway. I think social media is space practice as well in a funny sort of mm -hmm. way. When I blog, mm -hmm. tweet, Facebook post, I get reinforcement of learning out into the future. Mm -hmm. I crystallize my thought, elaborate it in a blog. Somebody comments the blog, I get another hit. I tweet it, it gets retweeted three, four times. Mm -hmm. I'm embedding it in long-term memory all the time mm -hmm. there. So I think human beings, I think social media is driven by that sort of space practice, intuitive thing that it helps us remember stuff. And what I hear you saying is that the learning experience, that learning is no longer isolated to a class or a course or, or no. a situation. It becomes embedded into everything we do at all times. So when I'm at the gym and I've got my phone on my, on my machine, my course comes up or something about my course comes up uh, that I'm studying and, 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 and gives me a module or gives me a, a chance to, to do a quiz or whatever. Yeah. But it's that integrated piece. So, so that's a wonderful, I, I love the hierarchy. I love the hierarchy and I love this structure. Um, that's a lot to, to bite off. As a matter of fact, I've already forgotten the last five things. No, um, <laughs> So where do we go next? Like, what's one thing that, that in order for us to move forward as higher education or education period, how do we start thinking about that continuum and taking some first steps? Well, in practical terms, I was like, I have a base point here, which I start from, which is good learning theory. Mm -hmm. So space practice is an interesting one because everybody knows, once they hear this, Intuitively, they know this is true. Mm -hmm. You don't learn anything without practicing it or yeah, repeating it. Yeah. And it's not repetition, it's deliberate practice you've yeah. got. So how, how, do, how do you do that in an institution, though? Mm -hmm. Well, there are open source. I mean, you can look at ANKI, A-N-K-I. That's an open source thing. Mm -hmm. I know students who use that in, these are uh, sort of techie kids doing computer science and artificial intelligence degrees, mm -hmm. who, after the lecture, the lecture is merely an opportunity for them to identify what's in this curriculum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yes, they're not right. learning for, and these are two-hour lectures these kids get. Interesting. How they survive it, I don't know. But they come out whacked, they get together, they use Anki, and they build, they, they, do, they have a differentiation of labor, they create their own questions and answers, mm -hmm. it's a flashcard system. Then the algorithm, the AI, delivers it to their mobile between now and the exam. Mm -hmm. These are smart kids, because they're AI kids, some of them. Yeah, so yeah. they know, but actually, isn't it amazing that yeah. they know more about cognitive science than a lot of teachers? Yeah, teachers, are, yeah, sure. And so mm, that's mm -hmm. free. There are loads of other space. Mm -hmm. I would do the space practice thing and take it mm -hmm. seriously mm -hmm. because you get massive increases in efficacy in terms of a recall and retention. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're, we're, only, we're in the brain business. It's the only mm -hmm. organ, it's cognitive mm -hmm. improvement we're after. Yeah. But we don't pay enough attention to the science of cognitive improvement, how it works. Yeah. And students don't know enough about how it works. Mm -hmm. So the advice I've often given, take notes, underline them, read them relentlessly. Yeah. No, yeah. no, you have to make the effort. You have to look away from your notes. You have to start recalling things from the back of your brain. That, that's a reinforcement event yeah. in itself. Sure. That's what results in high recall and retention. Yeah. I love that. And I love, the, I love the role that you're talking about 
AI and, 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 and the VR and AR piece providing a grounding or a basis for that space practice. And mm -hmm. if we do a better job of designing our systems to incorporate those technologies, uh, and as you say, based on uh, a design theory, learning theory, then, yeah. then we will advance things. So yeah. I, I want to say thank you and, and again, welcome. And no problem. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you.